Good morning, everybody. Glad to see everybody this morning. We got some people out this morning. That's all right. I had uh, marked some scripture on my phone to go along with what I was going to preach on this morning. And when I got up here, I stuck my phone in my Bible and set my Bible down, and my scripture was gone. <laughs> So I had to find it again here, but I think I found it. Thankful to be here with you this morning. Glad to see everybody. Uh, I've been studying a little bit on Paul. And Paul's an interesting feller to study. So if you ever get time, just study Paul a little bit. It's, um, it's definitely uh, eye-opening when you think about everything that Paul endured during his ministry and all the things that he went through. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about them here this morning in Second Corinthians chapter number 11, starting in the 23rd verse. This is Paul talking to the church at Corinth and and here he kind of highlights some things that he's went through, Tim. We've all, a lot of us have read these scriptures before and we know a little bit, if you've studied Paul any at all, you know some of these things that he's went through. But as I was reading these scriptures uh, this time, I, I caught something that I'd never caught before. And it, it struck my interest, Tim, and, and I actually had read something about it and I I never really thought about it like that before. And, and so I went to a different version of the Bible to try to put it in a little more, uh, a little easier language um, for myself because I, when I read the scripture, I thought, Lord, is that what you're trying to say? And I went to the other version, and uh, the NIV version on this one particular scripture, and I'm going to share it with you here in a minute. And it was exactly the way I read it in the King James Version, and <clears throat> y'all just pray for me this morning. But I, I read that scripture and I thought, Lord, I've never noticed that before. And so I'm going to share it with you this morning to the best of my ability. And and like I said, y'all just pray for me and and let's let God bless us this morning. But but God showed me something that I'd never seen in these scriptures before. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23. It says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more and labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes save one. That means thirty nine stripes he got. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I have suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. I'm going to read that verse again. That last verse I just read. He says, Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. And I'm going to read that same verse to you out of the NIV version. And it says, besides everything else, I face daily the pressure 
of my concern for all the churches. Bless him, God. And I'm going to stop right there in reading for a few minutes. But I, I think about Paul and I, I think about his life and his journey. And I talked to Yens about it just for a minute. And I, I just read these scriptures and we read here. All the things that Paul went through, you know, about him being beaten by the Jews and him being whipped with the rod and him being shipwrecked and him uh, being robbed and him being, uh, 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 you know, turned against by his own people and him being uh, uh, beaten multiple times and him being stoned. And, and we read about all these things that Paul had went through and and you can study them out for yourself if you would like. They're all written down in the Word of God. But, but I think about uh, all the things that he went through. And I want us to focus on verse number 28 uh, just a few minutes this morning. But he says, Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. And, and the other version says, Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. And I thought about those scriptures, Sister Brenda, and, and I thought about the daily pressure that Paul felt uh, because he was concerned about the churches. You see, God had called Paul to go and establish these churches and to edify these churches and to build up these churches. Uh, that was what God had called him to do. And it says daily he was concerned about them. Daily he was pressured and he had the pressure and the concern of these churches on his life. And, and it got me to thinking about the daily pressures that you and I go through, Tim. The daily things that we have to face every day, Sister Brenda. The, the things that, that maybe we don't always understand. The things that we go through. The, the, the pressures of working. Uh, the pressures of money. Uh, the pressures of paying bills. The, the pressures of uh, finances. The pressures of, of making sure we got enough uh, for food. The pressures of sickness. Uh, the, the, the pressures of stress. How many here has ever been stressed? Amen. Amen. I feel stressed at least three times a day, morning, noon, and, and evening. Uh, but how many here has ever been stressed out? Maybe that be your job. Maybe that be your kids. Maybe that be your, your home life. Maybe it be... The devil just stressing you out with things. You know, maybe you've been going through a sickness. But there's a lot of daily pressure, Tim, yes. that we go through. There's a lot of things on the daily that we go through. And I just read to you is that Paul had a daily struggle, a daily worry about the churches. He says the daily that concerns him. Uh, you know, the thing that God had called him to do, I believe the enemy was right there attacking him every step of the way. You know, all the work that you've done in these churches is for no good. They're not going to stick with it. They're not going to keep hold of Jesus. They've done forgotten everything you've taught them. Uh, they, don't, they don't do the things that you told them they need to be doing. They don't love one another. They don't treat each other the way they ought to. They don't honor God. They don't give respect to God. They don't put God first in their lives. They've already messed up everything that you've worked for. Everything that God had done uh, in your life. Everything that God had done set up in order in these churches. They've done messed it all up, Paul. You, you, you're a failure. You've not done nothing right. Uh, the, the, the work that God God's called you to do is going to be in vain because they've already messed it up. You believe he had that going on in his mind daily? I believe he did because the Bible said that he was concerned of the churches daily. And I, I want to talk to you in just a few minutes because uh, this morning because God, uh, uh, he always... Uh, puts us first and he, he always takes care of our needs and, and you'll find over in the next chapter, uh, verse number 8 and 9, chapter 12. Listen to what God tells Paul. He says in verse number 8, it says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And verse number 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect 
and weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. But I want us to focus a little bit on verse number 9. He says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Yes. You see, all these things that Paul had went through, it was the daily worry of the church, the daily pressures of the things, of the, the mental battle from the enemy. That was what concerned him the most. That was what bothered him the most. But you see, God told him and just a few scriptures later, he says, my grace is sufficient for thee. And that means I'm going to take care of you. That means that the, the grace of salvation, the, the thing that should mean the most to you will carry you through all of these things. Amen. Grace is enough for our needs. Amen. 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 That's where we're going this morning. Grace is enough for our needs. Grace is enough for our finances. Grace is enough to cover the sins that we've committed as long as they're under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Grace is enough to cover that. Amen. Yes. Grace is enough for our sicknesses. Yeah. Amen. Whatever ails you this morning, grace is enough. Yeah. Amen. Grace is enough for our weaknesses. Amen. One of the things that we fall easy into temptation for, grace is enough to cover that. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb here this morning, and I'm even going to tell you that grace is enough to cover all your stress. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you'll believe it. Yeah. And you'll receive it. Grace is enough. Amen. And we all get stressed out. Yesterday, Peyton and I was putting up a fence around the pool. And I'll just be honest with you. The wind kept blowing. We couldn't get the post to stay. Because the wind, you know, we, we dug a hole and we were concreting them in. But that stuff takes time to dry. And so we, Peyton was having to hold it. And I was trying to figure out what to do. And I couldn't get... Reese's auger to start, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, we was trying to just get the fence, excuse me, get the fence up, because we wanted to keep the kids out of the pool, you know, and not have to worry about them. We put the fence up and put a gate up and everything, so they can't get in there without, you know, somebody taking them. And uh, so we was putting that fence up, and I, I was just stressed out about it, aggravated about it. And I couldn't get Reese's auger to start. And he told me, he said, it's hard to start. But I had done got it started once before and dug a couple holes. But we didn't know how the fence was going to lay until we started hanging more up. So I didn't know where to put all the holes. So long story short, we get up there and, and I can't get it to start. So finally I thought, well, Reese has got some fence posts like for the, the goats. You know, the little metal stakes that you put in the ground that you, people use for cattle and everything. So he had some of them laying in the garage. So I called him and asked him, I said, can I borrow those? And he said, yeah. He said, what are you doing with them? He said, I don't care. You can borrow them. He said, I'm just curious. And I said, well, we got the fence up. I'm going to put the stakes in to hold the fence until I can get the holes dug and get the, the main posts uh, set and the concrete to dry and everything else. So hopefully in a day or two, the concrete will be dry and I'll pull those stakes back up. But I needed something to give it a little bit of support to him mm -hmm. until, until the, the concrete could cure. And it takes a little bit of time for that to cure. But, but I, thought, I thought about that fence and everything and, and uh, what we were doing and, and everything. And I, I thought about those stakes that we, you know, that we drove in there. And, and how that it supported that fence until, until it was cured. And, and, and I, I, thought about, I thought about Jesus and how that, that Jesus is the stake in our life to yeah. take care of us until we're cured. And when, yeah. what I mean by cured is until that concrete cures, you know, it, it's, it's not stable and everything. But, but, but we're not cured until we get to heaven. Amen. So Jesus is there staking us Amen. and holding us and taking care of us because His grace is sufficient this morning, church. That's what I'm preaching to you is about is, is it don't matter what we're going through. You see, that wind kept blowing that fence around 
And until I staked it down with those stakes and drove them into the ground, uh, that fence, it actually blew over, Peyton said, uh, and she had to put the trampoline over there to hold it until I could drive those stakes in. You see, the, the devil just tosses us to and fro, but if we'll let Jesus put some stakes up in our lives and, and kind of root us a little bit like Timothy preached uh, and take care of us till we get to heaven... Uh, you know that that's exactly what the grace of God does. Amen. Amen. It takes care of us until we make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? The grace Amen. of God takes care of everything that we have need of until we get to heaven. Amen. Amen. And we we struggle with things daily. That's what I, I'm trying to get to uh, the point across. Is even Paul, out of everything that he went through. I think the thing that bothered him most was the daily concern of the church. You know, it didn't matter that he had been beaten. It didn't matter that he had been stoned. It didn't matter that he had been shipwrecked. You know, those are, those are big things in his life. And I feel like those things he easily trusted God because God was the only way. But it was the little daily things, the daily struggles that he had in his life, Tim, yep. that, that bothered him, that he didn't know well, really what to do or, or, or how to handle the situation. It, and he said that he prayed for it thrice. The Bible says that he prayed three times about these things. And God finally told him, my grace is sufficient. Blessed my God. grace is sufficient. The grace of God is enough Amen. to get us through whatever it is that we're going yep. through. It is. Amen. And think about that word sufficient. He says my grace is sufficient. The word sufficient, it, it means enough. But it also means adequate. It also means plenty of. There's plenty of God's grace to go around. It's not just for me and you. It's for everybody else that will receive him as their Lord and Savior. But it also means Abundant. Think about that. My grace is abundant. Amen? My grace isn't just for the big things, church. My grace is for the little things, too. Yeah. And my grace isn't just for a, a little thing here and there. My grace is for all the little things that you go through. All the daily struggles. All the little stresses. All the, the little things that... The enemy just likes to throw at us on the daily to keep our minds away from God and keep us from focusing on Him and what He would have us to do. All those little things that we, in the day, Tim, all those little pressures that, that maybe we, we, we go through, that His grace is enough for those too. Amen. If we can root that and ground that in our life to know that just like those stakes were standing there holding that fence, that God's grace is enough. The wind won't be so worrisome. Amen. Amen. The attacks of the enemy won't be so worrisome. They won't be as, as big of an event. You see, before we drove those stakes there to hold that fence up, it didn't take very much wind to blow them over. But you see, now that those stakes are there, it's going to take a really, really big gust of wind to blow that fence over. And about tomorrow, if the rain will hold off and that concrete cures, that fence will never blow over, Tim, unless it rots. That fence will never blow over unless it rots because we concreted it in. Amen. The, the grace of God will, will, will take care of us. And even when the enemy comes against us and maybe moves us a little bit, we won't blow over. We won't, uh, we won't, you know what I'm trying to say this morning. You know, won't have to pray for me. This has been a hard message. I wrote this note down. I don't know where God was going with it, but he, he gave me this note. It says, when you've got a calling on your life, like Paul did, like every one of you all do, the pressure increases when God's got a calling on your life. Hey Amen. When God's trying to use you for something, when God's trying to do something in your life for His glory, the pressure increases. But the Lord wanted to remind you that He told Paul His grace was sufficient. His grace is enough. Even when the pressure increases, His grace is enough. I thought about the, 
the three Hebrew children and how they got thrown in the fiery furnace, Brother John, and, and how that, that, that the king, he, you know, when they throwed them in there, he turned, told them to turn the heat up. Amen. He told them to turn the heat up. When the pressure got hotter, when things got more difficult, it didn't matter. God's grace was enough. Amen. Amen. It didn't matter how hot they turned that furnace up. The Bible says that they turned it up so hot that the people that went down to check on them uh, burned up. Those people burned up, but the, the Hebrew children, there was nothing wrong with them, Tim, because God's grace is enough. Amen. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. And it can take care of the big things, but it can also take care of all the little daily things Amen. that we go through. Yeah. If we'll just trust in Him and lean, in, lean on Him. Does anybody got a word this morning? Does anybody need special prayer? I don't know anybody's heart this morning. But I, I know that God wanted me to to tell somebody this morning that his grace was sufficient. Amen. And it was a really hard message. I don't know why it was hard this morning, but maybe it was because it, it, it hit me as much as it did you all. I don't know. Because I stress about everything and worry about everything. And I'll be sitting at work trying to get something done at work and I'll be thinking about something at the church or thinking about something at home or what i got to do that weekend or what i got to do the next day. And, and if I ain't careful, if I ain't careful, I'll stress and think and try to uh, you know, problem solve in my head so much that I forget to pray or I'll forget to read my Bible or I'll let it get to me so bad that I, or I'll get myself so busy or so caught up, Brother John, and, the, and all these little things, all these little daily things that I go through that, that I'll forget that God's grace is sufficient. Yeah. And that God will take care of everything if I'll just trust Him with it. Amen. Amen. So maybe that's why it was so hard. Maybe I was preaching to myself more than I was you all this morning. But God's grace is sufficient, Sister Brenda. Amen. Does anybody need special prayer or have anything on your heart this morning?